Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. And today I want to show you how easy it is to create a vector that you can uh, machine on your CNC router or laser cutter by using VCarve and just grabbing a bitmap image, no matter how complicated it is, and you can clean it up really quickly to create that vector. So let's dive into VCarve and let me show you how that's done. So we are now in vCarve. I use vCarve Desktop. I've just opened up a new file. As you can see, there's nothing here. And we are going to work with a size of 24 by 24 by 3 quarters of an inch material. That way we can make a cutting board. And what we're going to do is we're going to just pick some complicated or shape that has a, a lot of noise in it. So we're going to take a state. And I am going to do Oklahoma. So we're going to just accept this as that. Uh, material we're just gonna start in the center and we're gonna go find the state of Oklahoma I already did a quick search but what you do uh, when you have an image that you want to do is just type in what you want now you see I already did a selection so a search and I did Oklahoma map and we go over to images okay so here's Oklahoma maps and lots of selection to choose from First thing we're going to do is go over to Tools, Size, Large. We want a large bitmap that's got a lot of detail in it. So now the top selections are all going to be large images of Oklahoma. Now we want to find one that has the minimal amount of noise, particularly on the outside of the state. You see a map like this. There's so much noise on the outside, we can almost not make out the state. VCarver is going to have a challenge with this one because there's so much noise because uh, it has to create vectors for every single line and because they're all weird shapes it's, it's, it's going to do so much thinking on this you don't want that what you want ideally is white space on the outside of the state this is an excellent one to work with this is a good one to work with um, that may be even a better one to work with Let's. Uh, so here's one of the things you want to note when you're looking at these things if you look at this one, it's got dotted lines. So VCarver is initially going to create dotted lines around this profile. Although this is a really nice picture to use. It doesn't have a lot of noise on the inside. We might go with this. We want one that's anatomically correct. I really like this one here because everything is on the inside and there's nothing on the outside. VCarver, will, on this image, VCarver will still make vectors for this outside stuff. And that stuff we'll have to clean up. So we don't want to. We want the best image we can get that has no noise on the outside, and that's it. So we're going to right-click over this one and save the image as. We're going to call it OK1 and click OK. Now, we are going to open up our VCarve, and we're going to bring that bitmap into this. So at the top, where it says File Operations, you've got the little folder with the little flag hanging out of it. Click that, and... Go to your Downloads folder, and there's OK1. Let's click it and click OK. And there she is. Now, that's a very small image. So I click it twice. It comes in with the just highlighted when you turn it on. So click it again. It will bring in these expansion buttons around it. And we are going to just hover over the inside boxes, hold a Shift key down, and expand it. The reason you hold your Shift key down is so it expands from center and you know what? I'm not sure I'm liking this image because it's just it's like cut off at the very end right there I didn't notice that so let's try a separate image it's even cut off over here so let's go get another image these are some of the things you want to be careful of when you're looking for this kind of stuff so let's close that one down let's find another nice image of Oklahoma there's a good one you can see all sides of it let's pick it right click Save image as OK2. Okay OK2. Okay and go back to VCarve. And let's go to, uh, first of all, we when, when you bring in a bitmap, VCarve creates a new layer called bitmap layer. Bitmap layer. And so we want to delete the old bitmap because we want it out of our way. That layer is there, so we are ready to go. Um, click that. Uh, button again and we're going to bring an OK to. Ah, beautiful. Very large image. It's 
virtually to the size we want. We'll make it a little bit bigger. So we click the image again. We grab the little box. We're going to zoom in just a little bit and just expand it just a little bit. We're going to leave room. My, my machine has a 24 by 24 workspace, so I don't want to go outside of that workspace. And there. I like that. Beautiful image. There's no noise on the outside whatsoever. Okay, we're going to work with that. So we click that and make sure it's highlighted purple. If you go to create vectors, down at the bottom there's a little folded paper airplane kind of looking thing. Click that. It's called trace bitmap. We're clicking that. We're going into the trace bitmap thing. We want to set on black and white. Now you see the image is barely there. So we want to make that image, uh, we want to get the boundaries of the state. So we have to bring our threshold up, which is right here. Just kind of eke it up, let the computer catch up with you until you get a nice solid outer boundary all the way around. And it looks like we have it. So what we're going to do, come on down. You have your noise filter. When you have an image that's got so much detail to it, you want to bring the noise filter up. That's going to create less nodes. Nodes are areas where uh, basically from node to node is a line. And we want to minimize as much as possible when we have unique shapes. So we're going to hit preview, and there it is. There's no noise on the outside with the exception of, nope. Um, there's no noise in the outside of the state with the exception of where words come out and we are going to run with this so click apply and close now let's turn off our map our image and there she is we are going to clean this up really quick so everything's on the inside one thing we didn't want to do is see if we got our outer boundary so you can see when you zoom in vcarve has created a line both sides of the outline of the state. That's exactly what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that outer line, and you can see it's now selected, and we want to make sure it goes around the outside of the state all the way, and it does. So that's good. All right, so click again, and what we're going to do is we are going to left click. We're going to hover near the end of the state, but not all the way, about right there, and we are just going to left click and hold and drag all the way over the state it has selected every vector inside that window and we're going to hit the delete button and we're going to do it one more time for this one let's turn the bitmap back off and see what she looks like beautiful beautiful image of oklahoma a couple of exceptions looks like uh, some characters have extended let's take a look so we've got broken bow lake we have the w and we have the E on Cherokees that have hung out. And it looks like there's a, a little bit of the S on, uh, how do you pronounce that? Oh, Cheetah, MTS, in the mountains. If I'm wrong in pronouncing that, uh, make a comment below. Tell me how to pronounce that. I'm pronouncing it Ochita. Okay, Ochita Mountains. So we're going to get rid of these guys, and let's rock this out. We are turning off the bitmap again. Okay, so let's do this. Click your outline and hit the N button, N for Nancy. That's going to turn on all your nodes. Now, I want you to see something. Every node in here is basically a line, and the machine is going to program every single line. So, every, so when you do your CNC code, this will be one code, then it's going to create another code, another code, and so that tends to create a long code. Um, it's okay. This isn't that bad. It's not a super complicated drawing, but we're going to clean this up a little bit. First of all, we got to get rid of these letters. So we know that in Oklahoma, this is a straight line. That's a straight line. That's a straight line. That's a straight line. And that's a straight line. These are curved lines following the curvature of the Earth. We're going to keep them curved because that's what everybody knows. So let's turn a bitmap back off. We are going to go inside this one straight line. We're going to turn our nodes back on. So we select it. And you can see we're still in node mode. So I'm just going to left click and drag over. And it's going to select all these nodes inside that window. When we hit the D button, it's going to delete all nodes inside that window with the exception of one. We don't even want that one. So we're going to hover over it and hit the D button again. It gets rid of it. 
and our turn point is right here. So we're going to keep that node and we're going to get rid of those nodes. Let's take care of the S. We're, so you can, uh, again, we're going to, that's a corner up here. Right. So we're going to just take this S. We're going to right click and drag. We're left click and we're going to drag to the right. And there we go again. Now we have three straight lines. We're going to do the same thing over here. Just going to select all those guys, hit delete, take that last one out, and then same thing over here. And D over there. Now you can see it created like a little corner on the state, which is fine. You know, we might we want to radius this around. And so we're going to do that. We're going to clean up that node. So now we have we can run with this. There's one thing you want to be careful of. You I mean, first of all, you can actually create your CNC code from this if you have a laser cutter. Uh, you can run this with your CNC router. The exception is you have to take notes of tool paths or tool sizes. Uh, let, let me give you an example. We use a quarter inch end mill, 0.25, right? And I'm making a circle for the end mill and we're going to click right in here. And you can see that the end mill will not get inside these areas. So we want to cl just clean those out because we are going to create a chamfer around this entire uh, thing as well. And so in a case like this, the chamfer will overrun the tool. So you'll have a little bit of a high spot in here and all these areas. So we're going to clean them up. But that's as far as I'm going to take it. Well, I'll do one just so you see, because I don't want this video to get too long. So what we're going to do again is we're going to just round this guy out. So we have the size of the tool, so we can eyeball that. We're highlighting this again. We're going to go back into node, and we're just going to eliminate a few nodes just to round it out. I hit the wrong button. There we go. I hit the delete button instead of the D. If you hit the delete button, you're going to delete everything. So I hit the D button. I got rid of that node, and we're getting rid of that node. We're going to get rid of that node. And voila, now you've got to see these tabs. We can just arc these tabs out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that node too. And now we have a nice little radius area. You can grab the little flag to give it a little bit of rounding. And you go around the whole state and do that. Um, don't do it too much because you want to hold on to as much detail as you can. So make sure all of your uh, vectors are no, uh, all your radiuses are no smaller than your quarter inch. So running through this section of the state may take uh, 10, 15 minutes. And the other thing we'll do is we'll add a little radius over here just so you see how to do this. So we're going to, i got to go back to node. We're going to get rid of this one little node right there. Delete. And it moved the line. So for the sake of it, we want to get anatomically correct. And we'll do it with that one, too. So let's get rid of that one because we want to keep our height. Delete. And we'll drag that one over. I'm sure whoever you give this cutting board to is going to notice that. All right. So we have now got a sharp corner. We're going to put a radius in there. So I'm going to hit Escape to get out of node mode. We're going to, um, we're not having our item selected. Down in Edit Objects, the third down first item is the fillet. Click that one. We're going to use a normal fillet and we're going to make a half inch radius so we'll go 0.5 and you go to the corner and click it and now we have a radius that is way too big control z let's go down to a 0.125 radius and click it again that's much better there we've eliminated our sharp corners uh, we need a radius in here we've got it we want a radius over here. That way people don't poke their eyes out on these things, right? And you can f work with that a little bit. So now you have got your state. And I'm going to show you what this looks like when we're done. So I'm going to pause this recording. I'm going to fix this stuff up. And then we are going to turn it into a cutting board. In a case like this, where I want to hold on to 
the inlet. You can see I lost my inlet right there as I've been doing some work. So we're going to fix these two. First of all, we are going to take a circle. We're going to take this circle and move it into the inlet. Escape, escape. So we're out of node mode. Double click that item and we are going to drag our circle into that. We're going to drag our circle into this one. We put this circle in there and we are clicking our item and we're doing a node. So how do we add something into this? We're going to add nodes. So you hang over the line at any point and hit the I button. I stands for insert. And that way we can drag it right up like that. We're going to do another I over here. No, we won't. We're going to take this and put it about the middle. Now you can see the little flags on top of this guy. What you do is grab the flag and stretch it out a little bit larger than your circle. And there, now we have that lake in there. We can hook it in a little bit just to give some more character. There we go. Outside radiuses like uh, this, we don't need to worry about like that. Um, so we're going to fix this one up a little bit so we can get our tool in there. So we're going to round it out, open it up. Just drag these guys out so we know that our tool will fit into that area. So that one needs a little larger radius. Actually, we want a smaller radius. The way you do that is grab the flags. There. Same with this one. We're going to bring our radius down, up. We're just going to bring it in a little bit and swing it around. Now that rounds it out. And it looks like, with the exception of this right here, which we need to remove, we hit delete. and can our tool fit in there? And it looks like not at this point. So we're just going to make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to swing it around. And you can see as you swing it, it changes the arc on your lines. And let's check it out. So escape, escape twice. We're going to click that. We're going to drag our tool into here and see what it can cut and what it can't. So you can see there's a couple small areas that it just can't get to. So let's take care of that node. And we are going to round that out, just smooth it out. And we're going to drag it in just a little bit. There. Now we can get it. And our tool will fit in here. Escape again, make sure it goes between the walls. Very close, but that's good enough. The machine will cut that. One thing to take note of while you're doing this, when you see on these inside arcs, these little flags, when they're tight like this to the tool, you want to make sure that the flags are approximately parallel to the arc right where it meets. Uh, not parallel, where it's uh, tangent. If not, you're going to create some interesting shapes that the tool can't get into. Now we have two offset flags here. What we're going to do is extend that arc a bit so the tool can actually get into that arc. And So after about 15 minutes, I've got all my little funny shapes straightened out. So my tools will fit in all these profiles. This one still looks a little bit weak, so we're just going to bring that out just a little bit. And that looks like it'll work around that tool right here. We're just going to swing this one out too. And bring that little flag around just to create an arc. Give it some cleanup. And that looks good. So you can see I've had to hack out quite a bit of stuff that was on here to smooth everything out. I almost want to keep that lake in there, but this quarter inch cutting tool just isn't going to make it. So we have to move on and just leave them go. All right, so we are good. And with that, we are going to delete all of our circles. There you have it. How you can take any kind of image and turn it into a V-card vector that you can work out on your router, your laser, whatever you want, really easy. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please leave a comment or do a like, whatever. And uh, yeah, hope this was helpful. If you have any tips, please put them down in the comments as well. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, where we, we imagine it, we design it, and we create it. And I will talk to you next time.